And we're back again, Jeepers Creepers Tarantulas. Uh, we're going to do a couple rehouses tonight. Just want to get these slings into different containers. I got these containers tonight from uh, Michael's Arts and Crafts store. You know, figured I'd give them a shot and just, just give them a try and see how they work. You had nice lids, you know, screw on, screw on, or screw off. And, uh, decent size. Better for the slings than, uh, little vials that they're in. I don't like the small, tiny little vials, so I wanted to try these before I put them in the, uh, baseball display cases. I want to just put them in here. Let them grow out a little bit in these. They can be in these for quite a while. These Afonopelmas grow pretty slow. So the first one we're going to do is my Afonopelma Johnny Cashy. He's pretty small, but I don't know if you can really see him in there. Give you a better look once we get this lid open. Focus. He's tiny. We're gonna put him in here. So he's got a bigger enclosure to grow into. She is in her new home. She'll have plenty of space in there to grow. She's got a lot more room in there than she did in that little vial. So that is one, and that is my Afonopelma Johnny Cashy. Pretty rare in the hobby. I don't know too many people that have them, or too many people that know anything about them at all, actually. You don't hear about them a lot so this is one of my favorites can't wait till it gets bigger grows and starts showing its blackness let's move on to the next one all right and here we are going to rehome my nandu color colorado valicis Velis, velosis, Colorado Velosis. Yeah, it sounds about right. So, uh, same thing, pretty much the same setup in all three of these containers. Got a fake plant, got a stick, and got a mixture of organic potting soil and cocoa fiber. And I got it mixed through. I usually like to just use the organic potting soil, just pack that down, make it a little moist, and uh, pack it down. It works really good for burrowing and stuff like that, but I've been mixing it with the cocoa fiber lately, and it doesn't seem to be too bad, so. All right, we're going to see how this one works. It likes to be a spaz sometimes, moving around, but we are going to find out. Don't want the worst part is trying to do it without the old substrate falling out of these little containers. There you go. Just see her. I don't know if I can try and sit this. Oh, 
Oh, come on. There you go. That went pretty easily. You see your butt right there. And there she is. And I think the common name on this one is the Brazilian black and white. Don't hold me to that. There's so many different common names. But I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Alright, let's put her down. And move on to the third and final one for tonight. This third one, she's pretty fast, so she might try to bolt, but we will find out shortly. She is my Algocephalus Eisendeming, so we're going to find out right now. She's in there. Can't really see her. As soon as we open this up, we're going to... Get a good shot at her. Focus camera. And there she is. Let's try and get her into her new enclosure. There you go, Mama. And there she is. My Augocephalus Isendemi. She's small now, but She'll get a little bit bigger. They're not a big species. I think they get around four inches. So she won't be big like a lot of my others. But she will be loved just the same. Oh, mama. All right, so that's about what we have for tonight. Um, my Ceratogorus darlingi, C. darlingi, the rear horned baboon tarantula, is in pre-molt, so I'm hoping to catch her on time-lapse if she comes back out and uh, see if we can get that molt on camera, and then I'll add it to this video. But if not, um, keep trying. All right, see.